let's begin by understanding what identity and access management is. In short, this is often referred to as IAM. This is used almost extensively everywhere. No matter where you go in the organization, whether you work in IT, finance, HR, you need access to systems, right? You want to have the business running. So in order to have the business running, you need to move data in and out of the systems. And for that, you need to have proper access and you need to have proper identity set up across your different systems. So take, for example, yourself, right? If you are working at a company or if you are studying in a school or in university, you would have an identity. Now, what identity really is? Now, on a day-to-day -day basis, we carry our driver's license, passport, any other documentation that is provided by the government in the country that we live in, that actually proves who we really are, right? That uniquely identifies us. Now, here's a question. How we can define or identify us when we're actually using the systems? Now, that's a great question. We cannot really use passports and things like that. So normally what we use is, can you guess? That is correct. Username and passwords. And if you have multi-factor authentication, which is like more than one layer of authentication, you may also use things like biometrics. You can use your phone to generate one-time passwords and things like that. So typically, if you take, for example, if you're studying in a university or a school, or if you're working in a company. So what happens is you come into the provisioning state, which is the very first state, wherein you join and the administrator of that company or the school will create an account for you and they would provide you with the username and passwords or anything related to your biometrics or multi-factor authentication using phone, smart cards, tokens, or anything related to that. So once you have this, now this ties into the create phase wherein you actually set up your identity. Then you make a request to different systems. For example, if you want to read data from a spreadsheet that is present on the file server, or you want to update any student records on your university, you would make that request. And in that request, you would pass in your identity, which is your username and password and other details. Now, once you pass those details, it is upon the systems to either provide you with that access or deny it. All right. Now in here, under the enable phase, what we actually do is we provision, we as in the administrators, we provision access. Now this can be one person can be granted write access, whereas some of the other folks will be provided only read access. So they cannot modify the information. So all of these access policies can be set up in this phase. And sometimes you also have modifications to these access policies because uh, you can either move from one department to the other, or you can be promoted to, let's say, senior manager and things like that. And managers would not be required hands-on access to equipment. So you'll be remote access from those systems. So just one example. Right, so in the enable phase, you would have access provisioning, modifications, and policy management. In the last phase, which is the exit phase, normally this happens if uh, a typical user retires from a company or they resign from a company or they move to a different uh, department or locations, which is different, which is separated out from your current organization. So in that case, what we do is we either disable the account and keep it disabled so that the user cannot log in using that information and subsequently we retire it. Now retire and disable is different because when somebody leaves the organization, we normally keep the account in the disabled state so that we can grab hold of logs. We can see historic information if there is a requirement and it is often retired after the retention period. Normally, each organization would have different retention periods. Like some would 
keep accounts disabled for let's say three years five years or ten years depending on their policies and ultimately they would delete them or retire them so this entire cycle is often referred to as identity and access management cycle so CyberArk does not fit into this identity life cycle normally which products would fit in here can you think of it on a day-to-day -day basis correct so microsoft active directory would be a prime example or you can also have azure active directory and you can also have uh, account management through aws so many of those governing portions that can help you in identity and access management now let's see how this differs to privileged account management or pam p a m now here is where cyber arc comes in so imagine this lock in the middle is the cyber arc solution and we are talking about pam or privileged access or privileged account management all right let's understand how this differs to identity and access management and what features this solution has the very first thing is password vaulting and what do i mean by that so vaulting often refers to as taking the passwords and other secret information and putting this information in a very very secure place wherein there are a lot of security controls in place and that is often referred to as a vault like how you have your gold or your precious things stored in a physical vault wherein you have lock and key combinations just like that you have this called as a digital vault wherein you store passwords credit card information driver's licensing driver's license information any other personal information that you'd need to keep secret all right so that's the very first function of a pam or a privileged access management solution password rotation now this is the second feature of the pam solution wherein the stored password that are located in this digital vault they are rotated and what do i mean by rotate is that periodically these are changed for example let's say if i have a linux account which is a root account and i can set up a policy and state that once every three months go ahead and change that root password so what this pam solution and in this case cyberarc what it would do is it would go into the individual system and it would rotate the password of the root account automatically so you don't need any manual intervention or anybody trying to do any manual operations it is very transparent and it is very seamless the new password is then stored back in this digital vault and updated all right the third feature is session monitoring now what session monitoring is is that if i'm an admin and i want to access the system say for example when i go through cyber arc or any other pam solution all of my access all of the things that I actually do on the system after grabbing hold of that password is logged it is monitored and somebody can actually terminate my session if they find out i'm doing suspicious activity or trying to do some unauthorized things that i'm not allowed to so that's what session monitoring and management is and this process generates text and video logs now video logs would be like a video recording of what i'm actually doing on a system like what commands i'm typing and we're going to have a look at that in the demo when we actually displaying that this logs later text and videos they are again stored in this digital vault so they are highly secure and nobody is allowed to tamper with them like being an admin if i wanted to erase my tracks i cannot go in here and remove or delete this text or log files i can define a custom workflow now what workflow means is that say for example i want to access an aws root account and i want to set up a policy wherein when an admin requests to access that root account it needs to go through an approval process 
wherein the user's manager needs to approve the access every time I um, request for that AWS root account. So that way, um, I can set up policies wherein even if I have the password stored here, nobody would be able to just you know take those passwords and access systems. I would need to have a um, I would need to have like a process put in place so that sensitive accounts are protected with additional layer of security. Now, auto discovery. Imagine if you have 10,000 systems on your network. Yes, you heard me right, 10,000 systems. That includes Windows, Linux, Cisco devices, Oracle databases, MySQL devices, everything. To get those passwords and store them individually in the world, can you imagine how long and tedious that process would be? So each of the PAM solutions, or especially in CyberArk, you have a process called auto discovery, wherein you can create scheduled jobs and you can create one-time jobs, wherein CyberArk would reach out to each of those systems and grab hold of all the passwords that it needs to manage it would fetch all those passwords from the systems and it would store in its digital vault automatically. So you don't need to manually key in 10,000 passwords for those systems. Now you can also have this schedule so that in let's say two months you add another 10 systems. Those 10 systems are automatically imported or password for those systems are automatically imported. My apologies. So that way you have a very scalable process and you don't need to manually do anything. Auto account onboarding is referring to when, when you have this discovery in place through the auto discovery process, those accounts are automatically imported in this digital world and assigned specific policies and stored in something called as specific safes, right? So you can actually do that automatically and don't have any manual intervention. You can also create policies for multi-factor authentication. Since you're storing privileged accounts in this digital world, you would need to have all of your administrators and any other users for CyberArk to make sure that they use multi-factor authentication, whether they want to use things like RSA token, uh, they can use Duo uh, TOTP based codes or any other uh, second layer of authentication based on your policies that you define. And lastly, privileged elevation management. This is tied to things like pseudo, right? So even if somebody has pseudo privileges, they cannot do specific operations like removing files, changing of IP addresses. So you can uh, restrict specific operations or commands that users cannot use when they are actually leveraging privileged accounts.